think I might have found a way to break Talor's curse. Go on. Well, after listening to the village elders and scouring every likely looking tome in the library, I learned that not all Tombries are the same little green menaces we know and loathe. Apparently, a chosen few live to incredible ages and grow to many times the size of their counterparts. The folk tales hold that it's the very eldest of these, the Tombury kings, who weave the curses, and that their magics bind their victims to them, that they might continue to feed on their pain. So if we slay the one that cast the curse, the feeding will cease. But that was my thinking, yes. Though I doubt it'll be easy. These kings are not just bigger, they're stronger too. And if the tales are true, their followers will defend them to the death. It is a perilous proposition, in short. But it may also be Talor's only hope. What say you? I'll do it. Even if killing this king doesn't break the curse, Mercidia will be a safer place for its removal. Thank you. So then, where will I find it? That, alas, I do not know. It must have woven the curse at the altar in Father's Fell, but as to where it is now... Fanet, you were the one asking about Tonbreeze, right? Because there's a whole bloody army of them out on the cloak! What? W w why would this stray so far? And why now? There's only one way to find out. I'll head up the mountain and see what's going on. Right. Thank you. And please, be careful. Please, mister! You've got to help us! The village is in danger, and if someone doesn't do something... Oh, you should have seen it! Stop. Take a deep breath, and tell me everything. Starting with your name. Sorry. My name's Eirik. When you went up to the air of hours with Miss Shula, I... Well, I followed you. <sighs> you could have been killed. Lady Shula told us you lot were great warriors. So I thought I'd be all right if I stayed close, like. But then I lost track of you in the woods, and that's when I saw it. Saw what? A great, big, dripping, drooling monster. Spitting out great spouts of water, it was, that would... Tearing up the ground and cutting down trees. Spouts of water. I don't recall saying anything like that in the forest. Well, I did. And I don't ever want to see it again. You'll get rid of it, won't you? All right. If this creature is as terrible as you claim, it could well pose a threat to the village. I'll see what I can do. Thanks, mister. It was over by the swift one that I saw it. Maybe it's still there. Then that's where I'll start my search. But this time, you're going to stay here. Understood? I wouldn't go through those gates for ten hundred gil. Not with that thing out there. Good luck, though. My lord. Might I have a moment of your time? I would beg of you a service. Certainly. What is it? It's a long story. But before we get to that, would I be right in thinking Lady Shula told you about the Witch from the North? Yes. She said that your ancestors found her here, and that it was she who taught them the spell to stop time. She was like Walius, you know. A dominant. The Warden of Ice. My great-grandmother suspected as much. She cared for the poor woman when the end was near. And it was she whose duty became to attend her grave. A duty that was passed down to me. I see. And the service you would beg of me? Well, until recently, the path to the grave had long been blocked by a fallen tree. But when our woodsmen finally found time to move it, we quickly realized it might have been better had they not. On trying to clear the rest of the path, you see, 
we discovered that a flock of bloodthirsty beasts had claimed the cliffs beyond. None of us was a match for them. But you, my lord, have proven your strength many times over. Would you drive them away for us? Of course. I'll see the path is made safe. Thank you, my lord. The grave is in a place called Witch Drop. To reach it, one must turn left at the Winged Wains, then follow the path around to the right, deep into the forest. Why so far from Haven? It was where she lived. When our ancestors first came to Mysidia, they found her there, in an old abandoned village. And it was her heartfelt wish to return there in death. So when she passed away, my great-grandmother had a stone erected for her, on the cliffs overlooking the place she once called home. How thoughtful. Well then, no time like the present. Left of the ships, then round to the right, you said. Just so. Thank you once again, my lord. I will join you at the grave anon. You wouldn't happen to have some time on your hands, would you, Clive? Only I was wondering if you might help me with something else. Don't tell me. Another unruly dominant. Not quite, but a dangerous foe nonetheless. It promises to be quite a hunt. Care to join me? All right. Tell me about our quarry. A fiendish, cold-blooded beast known as a Givra. Normally, we leave such animals well alone, and for good reason. But I have an even better reason to want its tongue. Uh, its tongue? If you'll permit me, Tributary, I can explain. Certainly, Yamila. It's been over a week since my sister gave birth to her first child, yet she still isn't back on her feet. We've tried everything to restore her spirits, physics and nostrums, the laying on of hands and of leeches, but all to no avail. The healers tell me there's only one hope left, a broth as potent as its ingredients are perilous to procure. It isn't only Yamila's sister who stands to benefit from this, by the way. There's her baby to think of. And Walias, too. She'd agreed to be his wet nurse, you see. I'd be glad to help. Thank you. Our hunters have no shortage of skill, but this task calls for more than that. And it won't be achieved through weight of numbers, either. The Giver is as wary a foe as it is a deadly one. Two hunters might catch it unawares, but any more than that, and it would pick up our scent a league away. Then it is decided. The two of you will go, while Jill and I occupy ourselves here. Perhaps we might help prepare the broth. That would be most kind of you. Come then, Clive. The river of time flows fast, and so must we. There's a Giver that has claimed the ruins at the foot of the mountain as its hunting ground. But as I say, they are wary creatures. We'll need suitable bait to draw it out. The flesh of a forest ibex should suffice. To the forest, then. There's nothing a Gavra loves more than a fat haunch of ibex. There speaks the voice of experience. Do you hunt often? Since I was a girl, my father would take me. Then after he returned to the sea, Yamila's father. Our families have always been close. Even if her sister wasn't Walius's wet nurse, I couldn't stand by and watch her suffer. These will do nicely.
return to the sea and to the clouds rise again. We have our bait then. What next? Next, we pay a visit to the Dark Gate to pick some local weed. It'll help disguise our scent. There should be a sprig or two of local weed growing somewhere around here. Look for the golden leaves. Is this it? Aye, that's the stuff. Crush the leaves between your fingertips and rub them on your clothes. Uh, if you insist. You could have warned me about the smell. Like corruption, isn't it? We'll have an honor guard of flies before long. But it'll stop the giver from noticing us. Its nose will tell it we're nothing but a feast for worms. Oh, I feel so much better. We can wash it off afterwards. If there's one good thing about the giver choosing the ruins for its hunting ground, it's that there's plenty of fresh water nearby. Creatures of habit. Look for some sign of its passing. It's sure to return to the same place sooner or later. Marking his territory. Something was. A curl, maybe. A fresh kill. But not a Givrus. The wounds are too clean, too small. These look like a predator's tracks. You can clearly make out the claws. But not just any claws. These belong to a Givra. There's no mistaking them. We'll lay the bait here. Let's hope our friend is hungry. <sighs> Still no sign. Patience, Clive. Hunting's not something you can rush. Have you stalked these beasts before? Once. Gavers are fast, so the job called for a bearer. But even with my knack, it was a close-run thing. Not many leaders would take such risks for their people. Says the man who battled an icon to save a boy he barely knew. It is the way of the moats of water to use what gifts we've been given for the good of all. And I gather it's your way, too. It was Sit, the man whose name I bear. He fought for his people and their future with every fiber of his being. I'm just following in his footsteps. In many ways, you remind me of him. Me? You're confusing daring with desperation. Quiet. Something's coming. Our guest has finally arrived. Shall we greet him? It'd be rude not to.
You weren't exaggerating when you said they were dangerous. They're forces of nature, all right. And with this one's passing, the river of life has calmed. O roaring torrent, son of storms, may your spirit run free in the open ocean. This flesh I claim, that your gifts might rain down upon us this day, and our river flow in spate once more. Well then, let's return to the village. We must get this tongue to Yamilla before it spoils. Is that the hunter? Ah, it's you. Nasef Savior. Are you all right? What happened? I was tracking an ibex when a great spout of water struck me square in the back, sent me flying all the way across the clearing. Did you see what made it? No. All I heard was a noise, an ear splitting din. Might this be the culprit? Leave him to us. You've caused enough trouble. Wasn't too bad. Hardly a threat to the village, but you can't blame the boy for being scared. <laughs> you made that look a lot easier than it was. Do you think that was the beast which attacked you? That thing? Not a chance. Would have heard it coming a league away. And the blast of water that hit me was beyond anything an Archelon can manage. Oh. A boy from the village sent me in search of a beast that could conjure such things, but... That's it. That's the noise I heard. Sounded like it came from the ruins. I'll go. You head back to Haven and see a healer. What do we have here? You deserve a rest. Founder. 
Something's been busy. Whatever this creature is, it's out for blood. But it's not having ours. Stay close, Toggle. Where are you?
Fingers crossed that's the last of them. Either way, I should let Irek know the danger is past. For now at least. Looks like that's the last of them. Now, where's the grave? This must be it. My lord. Thank you for making the path safe again. He's a... Was that her name? Yes. Hardly the most fitting tribute for a dominant, is it? A rough-hewn stone with naught but a given name engraved on it. But my ancestors had only been here a matter of weeks when she passed. Every day was a struggle to survive. They had neither the time nor the energy to devote to a more elaborate memorial. Yet they spared what they could to grant her wish, that even in death she might continue to watch over her home. She lived down there then? In the ruins? That's right. They were once the living quarters for those who served up in the temple. When the Northern Thanes sent her here to weave her spell, this was where she and her retinue stayed. There were priests, handmaidens, and a knight sworn to shield her from harm. Of course, they were all gone by the time my ancestors arrived, fled or dead in the Western Wars. All except Ize, who remained till the end, alone. Indeed. At least, that is the story as it's been handed down in Haven. But there is an epilogue to the tale. One known only to Lady Shula and myself. 
Some years after Issei's passing, you see, my grandmother came here to tend the grave and found a stranger kneeling before it, a knight dressed head to toe in plate. She asked of him who he was and whence he had come, but received no answer. The only words he spoke were, tell me true, whose grave is this? So she told him of how her people had met and cared for Issei, and how she had died. His only reaction was to stare up at the air of hours in silence. Then he left, never to be seen again. You said he was wearing plate. Was it black and gold? Do you know something of him? When we went up to the air of hours to unravel the spell, we were set upon by a shade in the shape of a knight in full plate. It manifested in front of the Vare, and in its ether, I felt Shiva, the witch. You think this may have been the same man my great-grandmother met? He says knight. I don't know. Maybe. All I can say for sure is it was intent on protecting her creation. Or perhaps her spirit. What remained of her ether, preserved in the Ver. Perhaps his spirit too became enraveled in her spell. Frozen in an eternal vigil. Till we ended it. If the shade you fought was Issei's knight, then ending it was the greatest gift you could have given him. Now he can return to the sea, to be with his lady once more. And if his spirit should ever return here to visit a grave, I shall ask his name, that I might carve it in the stone next to hers. That they might be together. Once and for all. You're back! So? Did you find the fiend that attacked me and young Eirik here? I did. It won't be troubling you anymore. Yes! I knew you'd get it. Only because you warned me of its existence. Not that you should ever have learned of its existence, but... All's well that ends well, I suppose. What was it, anyway? A manifestation of Leviathan's power. When we visited Wallius in the Surge, he was... Angry and afraid. The Icon summoned these creatures for his protection. Though why one would be wandering the ruins of Riversmeet, I don't know. Maybe it was looking for his mom. That's why she died, isn't it? The Falls. The Falls? Aye. When they took her baby, she threw herself off the top. We go there once a year to pay our respects. The whole village. Hmm. An Eggy is a part of its master's spirit, but... Wallius wouldn't have been aware of what had happened to his mother, would he? Well, either way, you did us a favor putting that thing to rest. Us and Wallius. Thank you. Aye. Thanks, mister. Tributary! My lord! Did all proceed as planned? It did. Here. Yeah. One giver tongue, as promised. Thank you. I shall add it to the broth at once. 
By your leave, tributary? If there is anything else that we can do to help, you need only ask. Oh, no, no. You've already done more for my family than I can ever repay. Just as you have, Clive, for my family. I only regret that I have nothing to offer you in return but my gratitude. It's more than enough. Besides, I'm no less grateful to you. For what? For welcoming my friends and I into your midst. For showing us how your people live. For reminding me that the world we strive to create, where bearers can live alongside their fellow men in peace and comfort, is no mere fantasy. I'd hardly call it comfort. Every day is a struggle. Though we do at least struggle together, it's true. As must we all. I only ask that you remember the cost of using your gifts as a bearer. I know that you feel it's your duty to do whatever you can to help your people. But you have a child to think about now. And Wallace has lost enough. I shall bear that in mind. That's all I ask. Oh, and if there is anything else that we can do to help, well, you know. Thank you. Truly. Almost at the gate, but they won't be coming any closer. I should buy Haven some time, at least. Clive! Are you all right? Fine. We've taken care of the immediate threat. Oh, thank the tides. I was worried I was going to lose you both. Till all he... Oh, he took a sudden turn for the worse just after you left. What? Is he...? No, he's hanging on. I fear the Tombury King may have begun the cursing ritual again, in earnest this time. And I can't imagine their being here as a coincidence. I think it might be happening on this very mountain. If it is, it won't be for long. Get back to Talor. I'm going up. My thanks. I shall pray for both of you. them. Come on then. I crave an audience with your king.
Another group. They don't look very regal. Still no sign of the king. Could find it had been wrong. Looks like that's the last of them. Out here, anyway. But beastmen do like dark places.
It's done. Which means the curse should be broken. Let's see how Talor's doing. Clive! Is it done, then? It is. I was going to ask if there had been any change in Talor's condition, but... Judging by that smile on your face, I think I already know the answer. You do? Talor! He's back! Thank you, my lord. I can never repay you for everything you've done for me. I owe you my life. I'm just glad the curse is lifted. There is one thing I'd like to know, though. If you don't mind my asking. What made you seek the Tombury's help in the first place? Oh, that, well... Ah, uh, you deserve to know. It was years ago now, back in my trading days. The sons of Greek arrested me in Oriflam, chained me up in a lightless cell with a great sword hung over my head, ready to fall if I didn't confess. Though they never said to what. I didn't, of course. So eventually they just let me go. And I never told a soul. Tried to forget it ever happened. But then you came along and the sight of your sword brought it all flooding back. I couldn't sleep, couldn't eat, couldn't hardly breathe, and I, I thought that if I gave my old chain to the Tombreys, maybe, maybe they could take all that pain away. All that anger. But it only made it worse. Oriflam has fallen. And the men who tortured you likely fell with it. <laughs> if only I'd known, I might have spared everyone a lot of trouble. I'd convinced myself that you were like them, that all outsiders were the same, but you're not. Far from it. Thank you, son. Thank you. Clive, there's something I need to tell you. After we parted ways on the path to the cloak, I went straight back to Talor and explained to him what you were doing on his behalf. And just like that, his pain began to fade. What do you mean, just like that? The Tombury King would have still been alive. I had to contend with dozens of his minions before I found him. Then... Perhaps one of them warned him of your coming and he broke off his ritual. Or perhaps, perhaps knowing that an outsider was fighting for him was what lifted the weight from Talor's heart. I know from experience that many illnesses are not wholly physical, but of the spirit, at least in part. Was there ever really a curse then? Or was Talor simply suffering from the pain of his memories and the guilt of what he'd done? For all the difference it makes, I suppose we'll never know. Maybe not. But this much I do know. It was your strength and your selflessness that healed his heart in the end. <laughs> I'll be sure to tell my healer friend when I get home. <laughs> 